please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Executive staff, I present class one, two, seven. Forward, oh, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, left. Left, left, right, left, 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 right, 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 left. Well, now look, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order off. March, march. Right. Turn. Forward. March. Please remain standing for the invocation with Captain Daniels. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow your head for prayer. Lord, we are gathered here today to celebrate the graduation of DeKalb County Fire Rescue Class 127. We want to thank you for guiding these individuals and giving them the strength, wisdom, and perseverance required to reach this significant milestone. We also want to thank you for covering the families of the graduates as they showed love and support during their extensive journey through the recruit school. Let this ceremony be a time of joy and celebration and also a reflection of each graduate's accomplishments. Amen. You may be seated. Well, hola, bonjour, salut, konnichiwa, and hello. Welcome, friends and family, to the graduation celebration for the DeKalb County Fire Rescue Class of 127. Good afternoon, my name is Captain Haygood. I am the recruiting officer and your master of ceremonies for this afternoon. It is an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this celebration. I wanna give a special thanks to our CEO and public safety, our commissioners in DeKalb County for the continued support with DeKalb County Fire Rescue. Now let me introduce to you my family and your new family, our command staff. First, we have Chief uh, Darnell Fulham, <laughs> Deputy Chief Melvin Carter, soon to be Deputy Chief Scott Sellers, soon to be retired Deputy Chief William Voorhees, Deputy Chief Thomas Burrell, sorry and soon to be Chief of Staff, Ty Welch. Now I'd like to introduce you to the Academy staff. First we have Acting Chief Captain McCullum, <laughs> Captain Harms, <laughs> Captain Pinson, <laughs> Instructor Bond, <laughs> Instructor Jordan, <laughs> Instructor McWilliams, <laughs> Instructor Riggs, Instructor Trotty, Instructor Lillard, 
Instructor Goddard, and Instructor Mike Morris. He's over to the left. And I'd also like to introduce you to our administra administrative staff, um, Jerry Hopkins and Priscilla White. So now that I have all that out of the way, meet your new family. Now, if you're in the audience and you are retired military, firefighter, in the cab, or other departments, retired firefighters, please stand. Thank you for your service and welcome to the ceremony. Many days, they will come home bothered, tired, a strong smell of outside, frustrated, and intentionally ignoring you. Thank you for letting us borrow them for this process, all to become one of DeKalb County's elite group of men and women. Recruits, will you please stand? I want you to take the moment to look at your friends and families in the audience and, and give them a round of applause for supporting you. You may be seated, thank you. First, they begin their journey with Emergency Medical Academy. During this journey, the recruits remain focused, determined, and motivated to get to this moment in time. I periodically, during their journey, I will ask them what's their why. Some share that they came from a family of public servants. Some say they do it for their loved ones. Some say they had no idea what they were getting into, but they're happy to make it this far. At this time, we'll bring up Instructor Riggs to the podium. First off, thank you to the families for the people who went through EMS training. I know that was a lot. They might have come home and complained about me a little bit, being too hard on them, but it's for a good reason. Um, but to Class 127, congratulations. I have a little bit I wrote for you all. So. Uh, the first thing I want to do is quote the writer Stephen Benson, who wrote, Science discovered long ago that carbon is the source of life. The ashes of faith prepared the ground for the planting of seeds that reduced new forms of truth, morality, and meaning on the, in their own terms. It is now time for the members of Class 127 to use their carbon life form to benefit others, to protect those from ashes and flames, and to find their own truth, morality, and meaning of what it means to be a firefighter EMT in DeKalb County. This group went through 20 weeks of EMS training that many had hard days and long nights to achieve the certification of an EMT. They learned new skills and can now help those not only in a fire, but in a medical emergency. Treat everyone as a family and know that no job is too small. Remember when you have many Sunday breakfasts, learn from those who came before you. Whether you use jam or jelly on a biscuit, the breaking of bread is essential to grow and learn. Remember space is an overexpansive place and this should not force you to learn everything all at once. The experiences you have learned from training have prepared you for this moment. Congratulations, Class 127, on this accomplishment, and I'm proud to call you my family. Then the journey continues. Now to the Fire Academy, 20 more weeks of intense training, both mental and physical. This was the beginning of the real gym membership. Agree? The training included learning to work under stress, stressful conditions in small spaces, in the dark, with heavy gear on, while accomplishing the goal to save lives and preserve property. At this time, I'd like to bring up Instructor Trotty. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say good evening to you families. Uh, this is a beautiful occasion. It's glad to see you all here. It's going to be a happy day. I have a few awards to present to Class 127, but before we do that, I'm going to say a few words. Can you think about the term firefighter? If everybody says, what makes you a firefighter? Courage, strength, bravery. Yeah, those things are very true. But there are a few things for me personally that I like to say that truly makes you a firefighter. Now, I'm going to talk to y'all 127. The first word I'm going to use is dedication. Dedicate yourself to this profession. 
Learn as much as you can. Don't be satisfied with the bare minimum. We always talked about these 20 weeks that y'all just went through. That's the tip of the iceberg for this job. Learn every single day that you're on this job. You should be learning. If you ever feel that you know everything about the fire department, that may be the time for you to leave. Every person on this stage, on this side, I can guarantee you they're still taking classes. They're still learning. They're still trying to better themselves in this profession. Soak up every bit of knowledge that you can get when you hit the stations. Be like a little sponge. Soak it up from your drivers, your firefighters, your officers. Ask questions. Learn. Learn as much as you can. Now, the other word I want to use is pride. Now, I'm not talking about being arrogant or being, you know, thinking that you're better than someone. But be proud that you just completed 20 weeks of ruling training. 20 weeks of, lack of better words, hell. It was grueling, long. It was hard. But it was fun, right? It better have been. <clears throat> be proud that just in a few moments, you're going to take an oath. An oath to make yourselves the Cab County firefighters. You're going to be a part of a family. And uh, Instructor Gray used to say something back in the day. He would say, we are the best department in the Southeast. I'm sorry to any of you firefighters out there. I say we're the best in the nation. I'm sorry. We are. It is what it is. That's just me and my heart. Be proud that you want to be a part of that family. The last word I'm going to think about, I'm going to use is empathy. And you may say, what in the world does that have to do with being a firefighter? Well, the term empathy is described as the ability to understand and to share feelings of another. Now, how in the world does this play as being a firefighter? And you think about being a firefighter, you see all these shows, you know, Chicago Fire and all the cute shows. Every, every call, they're going on something blazing, burning up. That's not real life. That's a cute TV soap opera. Real life, we go on other calls other than just being a firefighter. I mean, uh, fires, rather. For everything from a fire to an assist call. And I'm going to tell you a little story why this word, for me personally, is very, it's very personal. About two and a half, three years ago, before I lost my parents, my mom had in stage uh, Alzheimer's. My dad, who was in a wheelchair, had the only use of one arm and one leg. He called me about 2 o'clock in the morning. I stay in Snellville. They still live in Atlanta. You're talking about a 45-minute difference. He called me 2 o'clock in the morning, and hey, your mom just fell on the floor. All right, Dad, I'm on my way. So I'm breaking every traffic law I can think of to get down. I said, while I'm on the way, Dad, go ahead and call 911. Station 31 in Atlanta showed up. I didn't know nothing about this. So I get there. My parents are both in the bed asleep. I'm like, Dad, what the heck? Oh, they already took care of your mom. Now, this is what I talk about when I say empathy. They took care of my mom. Not only did they put her back in the bed, they tucked her in. My dad had diabetes. At 2 something in the morning, these firefighters were willing to make my dad a peanut butter sandwich. Then they said, well, Mr. Trotter, we're not leaving until you, once you close that door, we're gonna, we want you to blink the light two times to make sure you locked it and turned your alarm back on. Now, why did they do it? Well, I went to that station about a few days later, and it wasn't because they knew me. It wasn't because they knew that their son was a firefighter. My dad didn't open the door and say, hey, by the way, my son's a firefighter in the cab. No. They did it because they had empathy. They felt for my parents. They even went so far as to write my parents' address on their board. Two elderly people live here. Wife has Alzheimer's. Husband's in a wheelchair. You know, that lieutenant told me, he said, Anytime that he told my dad, actually, before he left, he said, anytime you need me, Mr. Trotty, y'all call. I don't care what time of day it is. So when you run these calls, think about that word empathy. This is somebody's mother, father, son, grandson, wife. Think about how you want your family to be treated. And that's what you do with their career. Treat every person. I don't care what kind of call it is. I don't care if it's... You helping somebody off the floor, you turning off their water at 2 o'clock in the morning. You are here to do a job. And that's the other word I want to think about is job. Now, those are two different things. Some people call it a job or a career. What's a job? Job, you're going to go to the next thing. You do this for a few little bit, and you go somewhere else. Make this a career. Make this your life choice. Make this something that you want to be proud of. Make this something your family wants to be proud of. And if you do that, you're going to have a good career. You're going to have a great career. So that's all I got for you. All right, now, for these awards. We got four different awards that we're gonna get out, give out. We're gonna start with our physical fitness award. Now, during that video, y'all saw the little course that they were doing. Now, that's only snippets of that course. That course is grueling. It, you're doing it on full gear, 
uh, you're breathing air, uh, you have a, about a quarter mile that you have to cover in a 13 minute time radius. Now this particular individual, he did this course in seven minutes and 35 seconds. Mr. Weaver, come on up. This is a great time to take pictures and run your videos. Great time to do that right now. <laughs> All right, let's go next to our class leader award. Now the class leader is responsible for a lot of stuff. You know the old saying, it rolls downhill? It truly does. So if they mess up, he has to answer for it because we have to answer to our captain. So it rolls down here. He has a lot of responsibilities. He has to get these guys ready for formation. He has to make sure things are clean, cleaned up around the uh, academy. Um, they have to make sure we play cards. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful game, right, guys? <laughs> they'll tell you about it if you want to ask. They'll, they'll tell you about it. Um, so that's the, some of the, this a small amount of things that he's responsible for. So Mr. Benson, come on up, please. <laughs> All right, so during this 20-week time period, it's just not physical. It's also mental things they have to do. It take a lot of tests, sometimes three, four tests during that week. So you green shirts in the back, y'all start getting your brains ready because I'll see y'all in a little bit. Um, so these tests are, they're not very hard, but they are a little bit taxing sometimes on the brain. Now, this one, I have honestly, I have never seen an average like this. Mr. Powell had our highest GPA, 99.83%. Come on up, Mr. Powell. And last but not least, we have a new award that, award that is named the Phoenix Award. Now this is awarded to the person who's the best overall in the class. You know, you have a lot of things that we do physically, um, mentally, so this can be draining. But this individual always had a great attitude. Always took everything in stride. What do you want me to do next? Was well, practice on their own, really set the bar. One particular thing is their quick dress. Now, if you're not familiar with quick dress, you have to get all your gear on, breathe in there within two minutes. This person did it in a minute and 22 seconds. Fully dressed, ready to go. Miss Moomy, come up for this Phoenix Award. And that is all we have for this evening. Congratulations again, 127. Uh, we'll talk in the hallway about your assignments and all that good stuff. <laughs> if I can have the class come up for presentations, recruits. Um, welcome everyone, Stephen Benson, um, got the pleasure to lead these beautiful people over there in the white shirts, um, the smartest guy in the world holding the plaque that we are presenting <laughs> to the academy. Um, it's been a pleasure learning um, how to deal with so many different personalities and um, I think we can all say that it's been a pleasure to come together as a family and develop. And personally, we would all like to thank our instructors, chiefs, um, everyone who had a say in how we turned out, everyone who had a part in our development. We would like to present you with this beautiful placard of our class. Thank you. All these beautiful people out here, we would like to thank you for showing up for us 
for your support over these last grueling months, these weeks of turmoil and development. Um, commissioner, uh, chiefs, trainers, classmates, I want to thank my family, my support system. I really appreciate you guys throughout this time. The rides, the food, the plates on the weekend, the um, just words of encouragement when I needed it the most. We really appreciate it. I want to thank God um, for his grace, mercy, patience. Um, no one knows the journey I've gone to get to this place. Um, I've arrived, I believe we all kind of arrived here at this point in our lives um, with many different stories and journeys. Um, a lot of background history that either uh, divided us or brought us together or made us stand out differently. And however, over this time, we, we figured a way to make it all work, meld it together. Um, personally, I've had jobs ranging from being a lifeguard to a teacher, and it all brought me to this place where I can, I believe, put my best foot forward, uh, where I can help those who need it in their worst times of need, be a light when there is a lot of darkness going on. A lot of us were frustrated because we were struggling to find our place. Um, we didn't wind up here on luck or purpose or happenstance. There was a lot of, um, there was a lot of application going on. There was a lot of uh, checkups during the application process. The, the finding out if we needed to do this or that checklist. And we all got it done. Frustrations. Um, but all of it turned into lessons that we've learned. And particularly the few lessons we've learned going through fire, excuse me, myself, I've learned going through this is not, not is this the end of, not, not is this, not, this isn't just the only um, end or excuse me, of this part of the journey. But like so many have said before, this is the start of something brand new. Um, we're going to start a journey that some have already taken those steps and excelled. Um, and we hope to do the same. Um, I can't remember how many times our instructors, our guest instructors, captains, chiefs told us that the lessons we've learned at the academy were just the basics, the bottom line that we need to know, and how much we'll have to learn on the job, in the experience, in the fire, so to speak, and literally. Um, another lesson I've learned, oh, one more quote. I quote one of our instructors, Instructor Gray, who is probably not here. Um, he said, never stop learning. Never stop learning. And Instructor Trotty also said the same thing. I can't say that he is the only guy that said it, but thank you, Instructor. All right, but anyway, um, next up we have, not everything is exactly what it seems. Um, we learned in EMT that trauma is deeper than what you see on surface uh, level. And we've noticed that there are many parts of us that have the, like I said, backgrounds that melded together in this process. And it allowed us to come together in different parts of our journey to push each other past obstacles. And it leads me to the last part where there's power in this community. We've built friendships that will last, I believe, a lifetime. We've pushed each other through when we felt like quitting. A lot of tempers were tested. A lot of trials were made. A lot of us are very pleased at where we've gotten. I'm for one, I'm glad to have worked with you guys for so long, to see you all grow, to allow you all to help me grow. I appreciate you all as well. In conclusion, I would like to say that whatever you plan to start, finish it, see it through. Hopefully we'll get to see this one all the way through till we get in these beautiful chairs over here. I believe we will. Um, we've learned to pick our battles wisely. We can't fight everything, everyone. However, the ones we can, we gonna win. And embrace the journey and embrace the process. That's about it, thank you. <laughs> So 
So at this time, we will start the presentation of the badges and helmets. Recruits, will you please stand? Our first presentation is firefighter Stephen Benson, who is being pinned by his father, who's retired from DeKalb County Police, Detective Roderick Benson. Firefighter William Fox, who's being pinned by his mother, Jennifer Fox. Next, we celebrate firefighter Kevin Harrison, who's being pinned by his grandmother, Miss Marianne Owens. Next is firefighter Mark Hendricks being pinned by his mother, Sonia, and his niece. <laughs> Next, we have firefighter Matthew Kennedy being pinned by his wife, Mary Cameron Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we celebrate firefighter Zachary Kerr, who's being pinned by his best friend, DeKalb County Senior Firefighter Frank Barker. <laughs> Next, we celebrate firefighter Marcus McEvans, who's being pinned by his fiance, Jasmine Gay, and daughters Brandy and Brooklyn's in the audience. <laughs> Next, we celebrate firefight her, Sarah Mumi, who's been pinned by her mother, Siam Mumi. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here you go, Mom. <laughs> Next, we celebrate Christian Negrin, who is being pinned by his father, Lieutenant Armando Negrin, with the North Collier Fire Department and his son, Kalo. Kylo. 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 <laughs> I was told that this family traveled from a long time, a long way to get here. Is that true? Yes. Lots of ways. Yes. Long ways. You're welcome. Next, we celebrate firefighter Andrew Powell, who will be pinned by his wife, Jenna Powell, and his daughter, Matilda. Next, we celebrate firefighter Gordon Richardson, Jr., who will be pinned by his mother, Ty Garrett. Our next celebration will be firefighter Jalik Ryder with his fiance Ebony Pitts and daughter Janaya. Next, we celebrate firefighter Marjavion Stewart, who will be pinned by his mother, Marvis Stewart. And last but not least, we celebrate firefighter E.J. Weaver, who will be pinned by his mother, Cheryl. Executive staff, you may be seated. One more round of applause for our recruits. At this time, I'd like to bring up Chief Darnell Fulham. <laughs> Good afternoon. All right. So I just have a few words, but before I do that, um, I am too going to thank a few folks. Uh, first of all, starting with our CEO, Michael Thurman, our Board of Commissioners, our Public Safety Director, uh, Joseph uh, Lumpkin, who's unable to be here today. Uh, and then I have to thank uh, this 
this uh, group behind me that was introduced to you, uh, you heard it mentioned, we do believe for good reason that we are a great fire department. But I can tell you that it starts with uh, this training group. Um, oftentimes I say this, and I think you're too far away, uh, Lieutenant, to maybe get any of our folks, but um, we often lose people because they know that they were trained here in DeKalb and they know the quality of work that's put into them. So if you will, please just give them one more hand for the great work. Also, uh, my staff was introduced. Uh, they do a great job uh, supporting me and keeping me on the right track. So thank you all for what you do. And then uh, you may not have noticed, but in the back of the room, uh, there are some of our firefighters that joined us today. Uh, thank you for being here. It's still an honor for me to serve alongside of uh, these men and women in DeKalb County. So thank you for being here. And then those folks that uh, greeted you as you came in the door, uh, you see them here with the green shirts on. This is one of our other recruit classes. Uh, you may have heard them talked about a little bit, but they hope to be up here on the stage soon. Uh, but thank you for being here and, and helping out today. So I just have a few words I'm gonna share with you, and it's really more sharing with uh, your uh, family members here up on the stage. And, and I like to think of this not so much as a charge, if you will, uh, but more of a reminder of what they're doing. So um, it's just spending little time talking about being a public servant. And so public servants commit their lives to serving and improving the lives of others, often placing the community uh, needs above their own. Sacrificing uh, is a cornerstone of their work. Uh, they take various forms. Each uh, is a testament to the unwavering commitment that they have. One of the most significant sacrifices that a public servant uh, gives is their time. And I believe uh, that was already probably recognized for you all family members, uh, that it takes a lot uh, for them to commit to this job. They're willing to devote long hours, including weekends and holidays, to their duties and responsibilities. Their work hours are unusual to others, and sacrifice personal time uh, can often mean sacrificing time spent with family and loved ones. Public servants also make, and this is true, a financial sacrifice. Sometimes choosing to do this work uh, as a public servant is in uh, spite of maybe uh, the higher salaries they could receive in the private sector. They understand though that, that, uh, that their purpose is to serve the public's good and are willing to forego higher financial rewards to uh, possibly help others. Public servants also sacrifice their privacy as public representatives, they are constantly scrutinized and subject to public scrutiny. They must be mindful of their behavior and maintain the highest integrity and ethical conduct in and out of office. Furthermore, public servants face unique and often dangerous challenges in their line of duty. They put their safety on the line to protect and serve their communities. Firefighters face dangers and difficult situations daily. They sacrifice their peace of mind and sometimes even their physical well-being to ensure the safety of others, a level of dedication that is truly praiseworthy. In conclusion, the sacrifices made by public servants are not just noble, but should be deeply personal from giving up personal time, financial opportunities to facing risks and challenges. As public servants, you put in uh, the community, you put the community before yourself. Your dedication and sacrifice, which is often goes unnoticed, are essential for creating a better society and also is, very, is the very foundation. 
At this moment, I want to express my deepest and heartfelt gratitude for your sacrifice you are willing to make as a firefighter and as a public servant. I deeply appreciate your choice to work for this department and to serve this community. May God bless you and your family. Now I have the pleasure of giving the oath to these individuals, which will be the last time that I will call them recruits. They will, uh, for now on, be known simply as firefighters. So recruits, if you'll please stand and raise your right hand. I state your name, do solemnly swear, that I will perform the duties as a firefighter of the DeKalb County Fire Rescue Department to the best of my skill and ability, and I will not let personal or political influence or prejudice alter my official conduct to the slightest degree. I will always remember I am a public servant. I will perform my duties to the best of my ability in any capacity or section which will serve the best interests of DeKalb County Fire Rescue and the citizens of DeKalb County. I further promise and swear I will uphold the Constitution of the State of Georgia and of the United States of America to the best of my ability. Congratulations, firefighters. Class 127, attention. Dismissed.